background in Pilates? How did you get into it? Okay, let's start back in 1983. 1983 was the first time that um, I entered the movement fitness world, not the ballet world. Mm. Uh, by then I had quit the ballet world and um, was raising children. So I entered the fitness world via uh, rehabbing from um, a toe operation, first of many. So then um, fast forward, I went into aerobics, went into aerobic competition and was a group exercise instructor. Okay, so I was one of those. Yes, I come from the group exercise world, but it provided me with the base of moving on to Pilates. So I was um, into um, being a director and a manager, and I found that exercising at a health club and doing the same old stuff was not challenging mentally. So in 2000, I took my first class from Elizabeth Larkham. I mentored with her for almost 10 years, and um, that's when I started. So that's 18 years ago. Wow. And you just immediately fell in love with it? And then that was your focus? That was my focus. So much so that after four years of taking my first class, um, and I got my certification, I opened my own studio. Wow. Yeah. So I've had my studio now for 14 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, what else do you do for yourself other than Pilates? to stay healthy and dynamic and well, feeling, feeling good and Well, young. yeah, I do take, I do take um, cardio classes called mm -hmm. Zumba. Yes, great. And um, when I can, well, I used to dance quite a bit, mm -hmm. tango. Mm. Um, but because that is so sided, you're always in the same hold and you only twist to one way, it exacerbated my scoliosis. Yeah. You know, we all have problems, well, right. there it is. So I had to give that up. But right now I'm just trying to maintain my life and keep up with my grandchildren and my own kids. And uh, that's about it, because yeah. there isn't much time. When... Yeah, so what, what excites you, or what do you see for Pilates going into the future? Changing in both what the teacher needs to bring to the table mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the clients we're seeing now. Correct. Um, the world we're seeing now, and also the, the business of Pilates. Okay, that's a very that's good a question. Big question. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but it's a good one. Yeah. Because, okay, I entered the Pilates um, world in Group X, meaning the first, I bought eight reformers. Nobody back then in 2003 or four, whenever it was, bought eight reformers. Group was not a big deal there, but that's mm -hmm. all I knew because I was not a personal trainer. Right, okay. so I bought groups. So now what do you see 18 years later are all these huge classes, Club Pilates, 12 people in a class. Mm -hmm. So you can see that we are now morphing into the group. I started the group way back <laughs> when. <laughs> I know, and people looked at me like I was weird, but that's, I felt comfortable with that. Yeah. And then you see this music thing coming in. I started way back when, back in 2004 with music too. And, and you know, people thought I was like bastardizing, mm -hmm. um, you know, the method. And maybe I was back then, but here we are now. Here we are now. 18 years later, you find people exercising to music. You find Pilates in the health club setting with music. Mm -hmm. And you can see that there is now uh, fusion of fitness and Pilates. Yes. And as far as the business model is concerned, mm -hmm. I think there will always be a need for studios because big classes aren't for everybody. Right. Certainly not for the people that can afford Pilates. Yes. Okay. So we now talk about people in their 50s and 60s. Some people are taking early retirement now and they want to keep active and they want to keep young and they want to be able to do the things that they used to do. And they're finding that beating themselves up in a health club isn't doing it because then they got to repair. It may, the, they may feel the effects mm -hmm. two or three days later, but nevertheless, it's affecting them. And they don't want to get hurt. Right. So that's where we come in. And we still keep them mobile, we still keep them active, but we are making them smart about it. Yeah. And so I really still feel that there's um, places for studios. We just have to change how we're doing our studios and our pricing to get more people in. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't feel like we need to dumb it down because some people need that specificity, particularly in rehab situations. Yes. And the rehab situation isn't in the health club. Right. So here's where we come into play. Yeah. And we're trying to keep those people who are 50 and 60 um, able to be out of the hospital. <laughs> Right, that, that preventative care. Correct, and the preventative care yeah. is what we do. Right, right. So yeah. that's where I see it. Great. Mm -hmm. right. So tell us about some of the workshops you're going to be filming with us oh. this weekend. Okay. <laughs> this weekend, I am doing the first one, which is choreography. Once again, nobody else did it. <laughs> but nowadays, we're seeing more. Yes. So um, I'm teaching how to create choreographic chains within basic Pilates moves. So say for instance, okay, everybody knows bridging, everybody knows leg press, everybody knows mermaid, but to create a chain that makes sense, not just, oh, I think I'm gonna turn my head here when I do this. No, it's, it's gotta be better than that. It's not random. So there's a systematic way of adding on oh, to construct and, and make that choreographic chain more of a workout. So they just don't do originally the six to eight reps and now move on to the next yeah. exercise. Let's focus on it, let's work that muscle, let's bring in total body, let's bring in rhythm. And so there's yeah. a variety of things. So just layers of things that you'll keep putting on uh -huh, with to, different focuses. Yes, different focuses yeah. and to intensify that basic exercise. Nice. The best part about it that I like is the way I am forcing people to think. I got to get those pathways going. I do. I really do. Yeah. Because that thinking will ward off dementia, will ward off possible Alzheimer's. So, you know, it's certainly better than doing crossword puzzle or Sudilco or something. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and the next one that I'm teaching is um, First Time for Seniors, which mm -hmm. is a great, um, a great workout and class. I've taught this class at the Dublin Community Center for uh, 13 years, every day. Some people drive from Oakland to the Dublin Senior Center, so that's probably um, around 17, 18 miles mm -hmm. just to come see me. And this is your passion population. You love I working do. with seniors. I do. Yeah. Um, and I have to go back a little bit. The reason why I do like working with mm -hmm. seniors is because I have a uh, master's in speech therapy and um, my work was with the geriatric population. So it's pretty quirky. I liked them. And I developed a class at the health club that I still work at for 32 years. Anyways, <laughs> um, I developed a class for them and it started over 50. Well, now it's not that anymore because <laughs> I'm over that. So, um, but the senior center class over at um, Dublin is called Chair Pilates, and it's just a regular sitting chair. It's not the one to chair, it's not the combo chair, it's a regular sitting one so that they can do the exercises at home. And um, so I'll be doing that workout, and I'll be using the smart bell, but in case people don't have the smart bell, they can also use a weight, mm -hmm. or they can also use um, a circle, a magic circle for certain things, okay. if they have that. And uh, I brought an 11 inch magic circle. Have you seen oh, those? Oh yeah, the little one. Yeah. The little one, which mm -hmm. is a little better. So um, if they have any of those, they can work out. And then the last one that I'm teaching is probably the one that's most difficult for an instructor to move to teach to music. So um, this is going to be challenging for some people because it takes a skill not only in recognizing what you need to do to the music mm -hmm. and choreographing to the music, mm -hmm. but the cueing you yes. have to cue it exactly in time. I'm just going to say that. I'm not going to really teach. Cueing is a whole different ball game. Uh -huh. In group exercise, you learn about cueing. You don't learn about cueing in Pilates. No. The kind that you do is like manual and then it's so verbose. You don't have time like that in a mm -hmm. group class. You don't have to time to be putting your hands on everybody and then going on and on. By the time you keep talking like that, the exercise is over. Yeah. So um, cueing is important in group setting. Yeah. But I'm going to be teaching how to design um, choreography according to music. So you have to clap the beat. You have to find the beat. You have to identify a verse, you know, things like that. That's going to be so valuable for instructors who are, who are scared to teach to music. Right. This is going to give them kind of a bridge 
into that world. Correct. Into to start that. to experiment and explore it a little bit. Right. And yeah. they'll have to know that you can't go all the way in and just turn on a tape and just go, or a CD or whatever, uh -huh. and just go 45, 50 minutes. It's not going to work. Yeah. You have to acclimate your client. So maybe only two exercises, then maybe, you know, two weeks later, you add another four exercises. Right. And they can get used to the fact of that because it's, yeah. it's just a little confusing for some. Right. But this is something that can really enhance a session oh, man. and a client's experience. So I think it's really important because there's, so like you mentioned about the brain studies, there's so much oh. science now behind not only our voice, Correct. For the middle ear, but also music and how the, it just can enhance the whole experience. It so is really important. Yeah, it is because, because the music um, connects to the limbic system, mm -hmm. which is the emotional system of the brain. So, I mean, when you hear songs like your faves that you grew up with, I don't know what it may be, if it's R&B, you know, or a, a Marvin Gaye, and you hear that, it just brings you back to such happy memories, and your body just flows, and the movement flows, and everybody's happy, and everybody's saying, oh, can we exercise to music? Well, I gotta teach first, so let me get my concepts down, and then yeah. we'll do the music. Well, I'm so happy that you're doing this because I was in the Master Trainer Summit with you at Balanced Body. Oh. And you did the class oh, for yeah. all the trainers. Oh, yeah. With the, the music and the choreography to the mat class. And I just, watching you, and I thought, oh, I wish I was able to do a little bit of this yeah. or to understand how she's doing this. So I can't wait to see the video. <laughs> well, I mean, that was very different because I got people to cry. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But just a little bit of that. Yeah. Like, this, like how to how to start to explore that with my clients. Right, yeah. right. But I saw, yeah, I saw the pinnacle it was um, weird. What you were doing. I saw myself. I said, oh my God, everybody's moving. I said, I'm not going to teach anymore. I'm just going to talk you through it. Didn't I? It I didn't even beautiful. teach. I said, and inhale. But then it was the use of the voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. That voice and the music yes. paired together. Right. But I said, I'm stopped teaching now and I'm just going to watch you. Mm -hmm. And I let them go. And people mm -hmm. went. Mm -hmm. They went for it. Yes. It was sort of cool, yeah, I have to it admit. Was. Yeah, it because was. you could see how some, um, the first teachers were using it more of a background, uh -huh. but I used it for what its potential is, right. which is that emotionality that can be paired with movement. Mm -hmm. And then you have, you have the epitome of workout. Right, right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I'm so happy Good. you're here. Thanks. And just um, can't wait for this weekend to start. All right. Yeah. All right. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.